Hey guys, I saw a meme recently that said something to the effect of when people talk about positive thinking, oftentimes they're just in denial. Something like that. I'm probably getting the words a little off, but I thought about that and I thought um, that's an interesting point. And, and so if you followed me for any length of time, of course, you know that I'm a huge proponent of positive thinking, that I think that positive thinking will absolutely change the course of your life. And so I saw that and I had to think about it. And the conclusion I came to was that, yes, that is actually true part of the time. And so I wanted to create this video to show you how you can think positively without being in denial. So let me explain what I mean. Now, I have come across people who use positivity as a front for denial. Now, the, the clearest example of this that I could give is the so-called body positivity movement, right? That you feel positively about your body if, it, generally, if you're overweight, right? And what the body, positive, body positivity movement teaches is that you should feel great about being overweight. That is that being overweight is healthy, is that being overweight is beautiful, and healthy and you should be happy to be overweight and, and stop wanting to change, stop wanting to lose weight. And so this is clearly a case of being in denial because obviously the opposite is true, right? Being overweight is not beautiful and it's not healthy. And by the way, you know, if you are in that situation, I'm not trying to pick on you. In fact, I'm gonna help you to be able to think positively about that situation without having to lie to yourself. So the problem here clearly is that you're trying to force yourself to believe a lie. You're trying to force yourself to believe something that you know is not true. And that's very difficult to do, right? You can say it to yourself over and over again. And by the way, that's why I don't like affirmations. Um, you know, if you're not familiar with that, there are people that'll look in the mirror and say, uh, I am beautiful, I am rich, I am strong, all of the women like me, that sort of thing. And, and I used to do that because I had heard people say that, you know, that's the way to gain confidence in your own mind and make that the case. But I had very, very uh, little success with that method. And I think the reason why is because you're just lying to yourself, right? If I'm looking in the mirror and saying that I'm rich when I'm clearly not, then that's, it's not doing myself any favors because my subconscious is just saying every time I repeat that, I say, I am rich, and my subconscious says, no, you're not. I am rich. Your subconscious says, no, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Right? And so you're just reinforcing the fact that you're not where you want to be. So you can't lie to yourself because the truth is that yourself is not that stupid. Right? Yourself is not that gullible. Yourself is just not going to believe your lies if they're clearly lies. Instead, you have to find ways to think positively and tell yourself positive things and make positive stories that are not at odds with the truth. And I've identified four ways that you can do that. When you're faced with a situation such as being overweight, such as being in debt, such as being poor, such as having some sort of disease, anything that is unfavorable to you, there are four ways that I have identified that you could look at that situation and think positively without having to be in denial and without having to lie to yourself. The first way is to focus on positive aspects of that situation. So, for example, is this pain or suffering that you're feeling right now, is it a warning signal, right? Is it something alerting you to a danger ahead? Um, so if you, you know, if you put your hand on a hot stove, it's going to hurt. But that pain is a warning signal. That pain is telling you, hey, you're doing something wrong. Stop doing it. So the pain is for your benefit, right? It's a warning signal to help you, to, to save you from further damage in the future. And if you can look at it that way, whatever pain you're going through now, if you can see it as a warning signal, then you can recognize that it's actually for your benefit and it's actually positive. You can look at something as a, perhaps an impetus to change, right? That if a situation gets painful enough, eventually it is what motivates you to do something differently. So, for example, maybe you've always wanted to be healthy and in shape, but you step on the scale and you really don't like what it says, and, and that thought of being that overweight is painful to you. Well, the, you get to a certain threshold where you're like, okay, I've had enough of this. I got to do something about this. And so the fact of being in that painful situation 
is what is going to drive you to eventually be the healthy, sexy, fit version of yourself that you've really always wanted all along. If you can recognize that in the moment, if you can recognize that, hey, this is what got me to finally get my act together and this is what is going to create the dream life for myself that I've always wanted, then that's a pretty positive thing, isn't it? Another positive aspect that you might notice is a defense mechanism. So for example, if you get a fever, you get sick and you get a fever. Well, it's no fun having a fever, but think about what is the purpose of the fever? Well, the fever is a defense mechanism that your body uses in order to kill the germs that are causing the disease. And so if you recognize that that fever is actually curing you, even though it's uncomfortable, it is actually curing your disease, again, that's a positive thing. I heard something similar about being overweight, that actually your, your body accumulates fat on, on the outside of your body so as to protect your organs from accumulating fat. And in doing so, it's actually protecting you from dying, from having much worse health problems. And so if you notice the large amount of unsightly fat around your body and you think, okay, well, I don't like this, but at least it is protecting me from death. Again, that's something positive. Or it could be that the thing that you're looking at negatively uh, was instrumental in allowing you to do something that is positive. So for example, debt is a very good example of this. You look at the debt that you're in and you think about that as a negative thing. However, you could reframe that as, hey, look what I was able to do because of this debt, right? So maybe you were in a bad situation, you weren't able to pay your bills, and the only reason that you were able to feed yourself was because you had a credit card, right? Well, that's a, a very positive thing that that debt has done for you. Or maybe you were able to make some sort of highly profitable investment or investment that's going to be highly profitable in the future, but you couldn't have afforded it out of your own pocket, so you had to take on debt in order to do that. Well. Instead of focusing on, oh, I have this pile of debt and that's a bad thing, think about, because I had this debt, here's this wonderful thing that I was able to do. So those are just a few examples of positive aspects that you can look at in situations that most people would consider negative. Now, I'm of the belief that the positive aspects always outweigh the negative aspects. You might not always be able to understand how, and in that case, you can always speculate, right? You can guess how this uh, pause, uh, this, this situation is helping you more than it's hurting you. But if you can take this belief, if you can have faith that the positive always outweighs the negative, then it makes this kind of thinking a whole lot easier. And so this is something that stems from my Christian faith. I believe that there is a good God that looks out for the universe and that everything ultimately works out for good. Now, I'm not telling you that you have to have the same belief I'm just saying that if you have a belief like that, then it makes this whole exercise a whole lot easier and it's going to create very positive outcomes in your life. So that's the first thing you can do is you can focus on positive aspects of the situation. The second way that you can think positively about a situation without going into denial, without lying to yourself, is to focus on improvement. Now, this presupposes that there is some improvement, right? So if you're not improving, then this won't work. But let's say that you're overweight, but you've lost five pounds since last month. Well, you kind of have a choice here. You can focus on this as a positive thing or as a negative thing. You can focus on, oh, I'm overweight. I don't like that. This is negative. Or you can focus on, hey, look, I've lost five pounds over the next of the past five months. I'm going to lose five pounds over the next month. And soon, I'm going to have the body I've always dreamed of, right? If you focus on the improvement, if you're seeing improvement, that's something you can focus on instead of the absolute situation as it exists now. Focus on the situation now as it exists compared to the past when it was even worse, right? And notice that you're on a positive trajectory. This is a good exercise when you're in debt, too. So maybe you had a big pile of debt, but you managed to pay a little bit of it off. Well, you still have a big pile of debt, but it's not as big, right? You're on the right track. You're paying it off little by little. And if you focus on that improvement, that feels good. That's something positive that is actually true. So the second way is to focus on improvement. Now, the third way is to 
focus on a favorable future, to visualize a future in which all of your dreams come true, in which your situation becomes the ideal situation that you would like it to be. So you focus on what your body is going to look like when it's exactly the way that you want it. You focus on your perfect relationship. You po focus on all of the things you're going to buy when you make the money that you'd like to be making. You focus on all of the wonderful things that you're going to be able to do with your time once you are able to start a business and buy your time back. Whatever your goal is, or whatever you would like to happen, focus on that and how good it's going to feel in the future when you have created that, when you have achieved that goal. Now, whenever you're dealing with the future, you're dealing with something that doesn't exist. There is no future yet. So when you're talking about the future, there is no true or false exactly. Right? So if I say uh, a positive thing is going to happen in the future or a negative thing is going to have happen in the future, well, in both situations, I'm kind of making it up. Right? So if I worry about all the terrible things that could happen, I'm making that up. And if I, if I you know, enjoy thinking about all the amazing things that could happen, I'm also making that up. So there's no true or false here, so, which is awesome because it means that you get to choose. Right? You get to choose which story you're going to tell yourself, and no story is any more true than any other. And the funny thing about visualizing the future is that whatever you visualize tends to come true, right? Wherever you put your focus, that's where, what tends to happen. And this is something that, you know, some people explain in sort of a mystical sense, but I think of as just a practical sense, such as uh, when you're playing tennis, you look at the spot when you're when you're swinging the racket you look at the spot where you want the ball to go uh, when you're driving a car or you're riding a bike you look at the spot where you want to go right you are visualizing yourself going to the place or hitting the ball to the place where you would like it to go and so it's just a matter of where you direct your focus tends to be where you end up going and so if you would like to go to a place where you have a great body and you're in great health, think about yourself having a great body and having great health. If you think about being fat and sick and miserable, well, chances are you're going to end up being fat and sick and miserable. So, so quit worrying. Quit worrying about the bad things that could happen in the future and start visualizing the wonderful things that could happen in the future because wherever you direct your attention, that tends to be where you end up going. So that's the third option, is to think about a future that is favorable to you. Now, the fourth way to do it is when all else fails, just think about something else, right? There are some situations where you can try to think positively about it, but it's probably just not going to happen. So a good example of this is when you have a terrible headache. If you think about the headache, you know, you could think about, oh, this is a warning signal telling me I should do something differently with my life, or you could think about... Uh, how, okay, well, maybe I'm not getting headaches as much as I used to, uh, but chances are that's going to be difficult. When you're in, like physically in pain right now, it's kind of hard. And so probably the best thing you could do in this situation is take a painkiller and, and think about something else. Read a book, watch a TV show, watch a movie. Just find something else to think about that, that gets you off of this bad feeling subject and gets you into feeling something nice. Look, being honest with yourself about a situation doesn't mean that you have to think about it all the time, right? I mean, you can't look in a mirror and say, I don't have a headache, I don't have a headache, I don't have a headache. That's not going to work. That does not mean that you have to constantly think about how you do have a headache and how much pain you're in, right? Just divert your attention. Find something that feels better. Think about all the things that are going right in your life. Think about your pet or your wife or your kids or it's just something that makes you happy. So that's the fourth option. When all else fails, just think about something different entirely. So those are your four options. Either look at the positive aspects of the situation or focus on the improvement that has happened thus far in the situation or consider the future, think about, focus on a future that you would like to happen, or finally, if all else fails, just think about something else that is not so painful to you. Think about something that makes you feel good.
So if you found this helpful, I would love to hear about it. And I think that you would also really enjoy another video that I did recently where I show you how to earn a doctor's salary working part time from home. And now when you watch this video, I want you to think about this in a positive light, right? It's really easy to be skeptical. It's really easy to think, oh no, this won't work. Oh, I'm not smart enough. Oh no, this is only for special people. Oh, maybe it works if you got in five years ago, but it's not gonna work now, right? There's all these negative uh, excuses that will naturally come up in your head. So try to watch this video and recognize when you're thinking things that are negative, when you're think especially when they're things that are, you're just making up. Right? When you say this won't work, when you say, oh, you have to be special in order to do this, do you have some real, real reason to believe this? Or is your brain just used to thinking in a negative manner? So um, if you're interested, go ahead and watch the video, which I will put up here. And as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. I'd appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up or the like button button on whatever video platform you're looking at because it makes the algorithms like me better. And subscribe to this channel if you want more like it. 